Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the best Line of Duty theories for Season 6, which has just been announced to air on the 21st of March. And I am so excited. It is one of my favourite shows. It is brilliant in so many different ways. And yeah, let's get into the video. This video is going to contain major spoilers for Line of Duty. So if you haven't seen Line of Duty, don't watch this video. So I've collected the theories from places like Reddit and news articles and just kind of like fan sites and I'm going to give my opinion on them and kind of like some evidence that I found that either backs them up or you know kind of discredits them and yeah so there'll be a bunch of different theories and it will be mainly be around the kind of main mystery which is who is H. So in at the end at the end of season five, we find out that H is not one person but four. So there are three people that we believe to be H, and these are Hilton, Dot, and Jill. So there is only one more to find out, and this is the biggest mystery. <laughs> and hopefully we'll have this solved at the end of season six. Hopefully, I think there's only going to be one more season, um, from what I've heard. Um, so hopefully this will like kind of collect up all the the loose ends and tie them all together for a amazing finale. One of the biggest theories that I have found online is that Kate, you know, our lovely Kate is H. Kate is a corrupt cop. And I didn't really believe this theory when I watched it. Like I, that wasn't something that I picked up on. One of my theories is that Kate will be investigated in season six for being a corrupt cop, as we've seen this trend with Hastings and with Steve. So it makes sense that Kate will be kind of on the other end of like the interrogation. So yeah, I definitely think that's gonna happen. But a lot of the theory around why Kate is H comes from the fact she is kind of always the one that's doing all the manipulation without kind of outright doing it, if that makes sense. Um, so she kind of pushed people into certain things. So here are some kind of little things that kind of make me believe that Kate could be hate or corrupt or have some sort of ulterior motive. So first of all, she is great at being undercover. That's her whole thing. That's what she is used for on AC12 is being undercover, a double agent almost. So it makes sense that she could be undercover in AC12. It's definitely possible that she could be like triple undercover, let's say, and we don't actually know how she got into AC12. As far as I'm aware, I don't remember anything about how she got into AC12, so she could have been planted there. So we know Steve got into AC12 because he went against corruption and so he was put in AC12, that makes sense. But with Kate, we don't know how. And the first thing we saw of her was she was undercover, which could be a hint to show that she is undercover in AC12. She's also not kind of completely innocent. From what we've seen, she cheated on her husband with somebody whose wife just died and then she investigated the wife's death like conflict of interest much and I know she does address this um but she doesn't outright say why um you know with when she was telling um Hastings it was like oh well I am a friend I don't feel comfortable investigating her which is fair enough but she should have told him probably not the best thing to say oh yeah I'm having an affair with her husband but like if you're so anti-corruption then this is something that you would probably do you know I mean, none of the AC12 people are perfect, but like, yeah. So this kind of proves that she's not morally brilliant in, or she's not perfect. She also doesn't hesitate to investigate her peers. She, so far, she has investigated Dot, Hastings and Steve. While this could be showing that she wants to investigate all corruption, even if that means investigating her peers, this could also show that she will kind of do anything to kind of put the blame onto them or shift the suspicion away from her and onto them. And when it's kind of revealed to them that, oh no, no, she actually wasn't investigating you, she was just pretending to so that she can investigate other people. Again, this kind of asks the question, is there anything else she is lying about? Is she actually investigating them? Is she corrupt? You know, it also kind of, she might not have been corrupt from the start. It could have been, she's been like held hostage with the information that she had an affair 
with somebody that she was investigating. Yeah, she's got involvement with corruption. You know, kind of indirectly, but it could be directly, who knows. Okay, so I'm just going to read out some really interesting points that somebody pointed out in a Reddit post, and I will link this in the description down below. This Reddit post and one of the main, one of the biggest comments underneath is probably one of the main kind of sources of information about Kate. They really, really dig into her character, and I think it's pretty incredible. So the main Reddit post points out that Fleming has very cleverly and subtly persuaded Hastings to authorise the print shop raid, the brothel raid, the Eastfield raid, and the nightclub surveillance. Fleming then blamed Hastings when they went wrong, botched raid, lost intel, etc., and then reported him to the DCC. Corbett told Arnott they were planning to move premises anyway. She's kind of authorising these raids that are a bit controversial, like even Steve kind of points out that they're not great, you know, probably not the best thing to do, kind of like blow our cover kind of thing. But she goes ahead and when they kind of fail, it's, oh, this is because, this is because Hastings are suspicious. Shifting the blame again. Someone else pointed out that she only became career ambitious when the existing caddy was removed, which was Dot. Essentially, she has replaced Dot in AC12, has she replaced him in the dodgy copper scheme of things? Which, yeah, definitely, when you look at it, it's like as soon as Dot was removed from AC12, you know, when he died, you know, he's not able to do those things that he's put in AC12 to do. So it makes sense that now Kate has suddenly decided, I'm actually going to get my, pass my inspector's exam. I'm going to become an inspector. Um, Hastings initially goes for Steve for the role of inspector, but when Steve has um, his injury, maybe that was planned so Kate could then get the role of inspector. We don't actually know how Jimmy Lakewell got involved with the organised crime, as far as I'm aware, so maybe Kate employed him to throw him down the stairs. So this is another thing that I kind of noticed when I start, started investigating this theory. So this points out that getting so close to Cotton could have been because she was tasked with by her real bosses with keeping an eye on Dot, you know, checking he wasn't going to unravel or betray the organised crime. So obviously, as an audience, we only know what we are shown. You know, we're not going to know kind of what goes behind the scenes with the characters, you know? So what we saw was Kate and Dot, you know, kind of getting friendly, you know, doing some kind of undercover-ish things. Well, Kate was supposedly investigating Dot. She had suspicions about him. What could have been happening, which we only saw some bit, was that they were working together, you know, to perhaps frame somebody, or they were working, or Kate, like this comment suggests, that Kate was actually just checking that Dot was on the right track with the organised crime, you know, so that she was kind of making sure everything was going smoothly, and when it doesn't, she then betrays him. Dot also saves Kate's life. Is this because he, you know, generally likes he's actually a good guy, or because he knows that she is more vital to the organised crime than he is? So she is kind of his superior and she's, and he needs to save her. There's also some suspicion that Kate doctored the footage that she recorded of his dying confession. I, I don't really... I've tried looking at this theory and I don't kind of understand where they're coming from. I think it's that... When we saw what actually happened, we saw Dot die, we saw that, but then the footage that Kate had and the audio recording didn't match up to what we saw. While this could just be an error made in filming, some people are questioning about whether or not Kate actually doctored this footage to make it say what she wanted it to say. There's loads of other things to do with Kate, and I will, like I said, I will link the comment down below. But I just think it's really interesting. It's not something that I initially saw when I watched the show. I really like Kate. I think she is... I don't... Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I think there is definitely something going on with Kate, because as the seasons have progressed, she has kind of got a bit more hostile towards Hastings and Steve. And I don't know what this reason is. Maybe it's just because she feels undermined by them. Maybe it's because she is seeing this suspicious, suspicious behaviour with them. She's not the only one to see these kind of dodgy behaviours between them, you know? So, you know, they have been investigated, you know, independently from Kate, from what we know. So it begs the question, you know, is she corrupt or is she just a better anti-corruption unit than Steve and Hastings? I personally don't want it to happen. I do really like Kate, but I can definitely, you know, this is making me question it all. I definitely think she is going to be investigated and maybe we do find some other things out about her, but I 
don't know whether she is H, but for me, I don't want them to introduce a new character and that character be H. I want it to be somebody that we know, somebody that we trusted. That makes sense, doesn't it? H is going to be somebody that everybody trusts. Everybody trusts Kate, so why can't it be her? So the next biggest theory, and one that we actually saw investigated in season five, is that Hastings is H. You know, his name match up, H for Hastings. So as I said before, Hastings was heavily investigated in season five, and a lot of people still believe that he is H, or at least he is corrupt. You know, there's a difference. They could be corrupt and not actually H. So he is a Freemason. Freemasons are incredibly loyal to their members, and it is a very sexist organisation, if I do so say myself. We've seen Kate kind of look at this in a way, you know, she went to a female, like, police chief and was like, I want to investigate Hastings, you're the only person I can ask because he is a Freemason. Freemason's male, you're the only female one. Hastings is also somebody who is a bit hesitant to investigate high-ranking police officers and also high-profile, like, politicians or members of society. Is this because he knows the politics of police work, that if you investigate a high profile person, there is a big chance it could backfire and damage your own reputation and your own standing as a police officer? Or is it because he is corrupt and he doesn't want to investigate the majorly corrupt police officers? I also saw um, someone point out that before Steve joined, their main kind of investigation was to do with laddering minor corruption in my opinion you know laddering obviously is bad it's bad for kind of the reputation of police you know, that was the main thing they were investigating until steve came along and they were like oh well let's investigate this and that's when it all started to blow up can't not mention this but there is that glaring clue that h that hastings is h because of the way he spells definitely and the Mysterious guy on H on the computer also spouts definitely the same way that Hastings does, something that Kate and Steve did notice and was pulled up in his interrogation. This definitely is a very commonly misspelt word, so it's not like the biggest clue, but it's definitely, you know, it warrants suspicion, and obviously that suspicion was brought upon him. Another thing that is kind of a, another hint towards corruption was the fact that he hid half of the money and then gave it to, you know, a grieving widow, which is not a bad thing to do. It, you know, it shows that his, his kind of goodness within him, he is giving this money to somebody who needs it. But it shows that he's not morally upholding in terms of kind of the rules of anti-corruption. He shouldn't have given that money away. He should have, you know, given it to the authority. But it definitely is, it, it shows that he's not following the rules to the letter of the law like he up makes other people do, which I think is very interesting. So yeah, I personally, I lean more towards Kate being H than I do Hastings, because we've seen Hastings kind of go through that interrogation process. I don't think it will be him, because yeah, it just doesn't make as much sense to me. So another theory that people have, and one that I actually, I think I believe quite a lot, is that there isn't a H. H is a red herring. The whole H thing was figured out through Dot's dying confession, in which Kate asked him to blink at the letter, the first letter of their name or something, and when he got the H, he blinked. Could he have just needed to blink, you know? I, you know, if they got to H, you know, he could have just needed to blink. And the next part about there being four people who are H was kind of drawn upon from him tapping his hand against his leg, he, tatted, ta he tapped four dots. So that's four dots to mean H, which is in Morse code, H is four dots. Also it four dots, so there are four corrupt cops. You see, it's all very kind of assuming. There's not really anything solid to really take that by. And we don't actually hear certain things of the, of the tape, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like they say, oh yeah, Dot's dying confession was used to um, arrest this person. But then we don't actually hear what that is. Correct me if I'm wrong, like I don't remember hearing the full confession thing. But I don't know, we'll see. I think the whole kind of the blinking and the tapping could just be co coincidence. Or, you know, his body like dying he was dying as we saw that so it could just be his body's way of responding to death or or 
he could be they've just interpreted it the wrong way that is more than possible i think i don't know i've had a lot of people complain about this kind of revelation that there are four people because he tapped his leg four times like <laughs> it's just it doesn't seem clever enough if that makes sense like the writing is so clever and you find out clues in such interesting ways so it it a bit underwhelming in a way that that's what they figure out like I don't know I feel like it could mean something else I just feel like there's something they're missing in this whole H thing obviously the fourth person if it is H but like it just doesn't seem to add up as securely as other things do it's very kind of coincidental in my opinion so the last kind of main theory about who H is is Steve yeah <laughs> every person in AC12 is corrupt according to theories on the internet so the main theories with um, Steve being corrupt is, you know, we saw him being investigated and he has a history of not quite being the most moral or professional person, you know, sleeping with Denton, which we, you know, is kind of like, did he actually sleep with her? And the theory that I saw kind of starts at the very beginning of Line of Duty, the idea that Steve didn't actually just fall into AC12 as we saw, that he was actually placed there and the whole thing was orchestrated theory suggests that Steve deliberately made the letter, the number on the door, fall down and then he called the kind of strike on the house and the killing of that person and then betrayed his team, knowing that there was a space in AC12 and that he would be recruited. But again, my where this theory falls apart for me, which is kind of what I mentioned before, as soon as Steve enters AC12, that's when all the big thing happens. So surely if Steve was corrupt, as soon as he entered AC12, things would begin to be covered up. He was the one that kind of heavily investigated Gates to kind of uncover this bigger source of corruption than just laddering. This one I think is definitely the weakest. I think we've seen Steve be investigated. Yes, he's not the most like professional person all the time, but I don't think he's corrupt. So the next few theories are kind of minor in comparison to the ones I've mentioned before and they're just kind of to do with general things rather than like who is H and big things like that. So the first one is in an interview um, with the Out to Lunch podcast said, I can reveal exclusively in season six, there is a character who has been referred to in a past series but never met who we meet in season six. So it's kind of things people have said online Then it could be Dot's ex-wife who works in forensics which I think this would be really interesting because it kind of, you could interrogate her as to how much she knew about Dot's corruption. Did she kind of, was she helping him in terms of forensics and kind of covering up evidence or letting him know about certain crimes? You know, we've seen crime scenes being messed with. We've seen that with um, Hargreaves. And I actually thought Hargreaves, sorry, this is off the point, but like I thought Hargreaves was one of the H people until they brought them up on the board. Like, I thought that made sense. He was corrupt, right? Why wasn't he assumed to be H? Yeah, so did his ex-wife kind of aid him in his corruption? Or was she kind of blindsided by it? Did she not know anything? Could she give a bit more insight into the level of corruption? How he got involved with the people he was meeting up with secretly, you know? I think that character is kind of interesting. Some, also, some other people mentioned that we could be seeing more people on Danny's list which I think that is definitely very plausible. There were names on there that I didn't recognise, so it makes sense that we would, if they're, you know, involved in that kind of horrific things, then it makes sense that we would see them possibly be investigated in season six. Unless he's just referring to H. Is H somebody that we haven't met yet? Which I really hope not, because as I said, it makes, it'd be more exciting if H is somebody that we know and we trust and we love. Another one is that the seasons are going, or like season six is going to heavily link back to season one, mainly because we keep seeing Jackie Laverty be mentioned. We keep seeing her body. We keep seeing references to her. And it's like, why? Like season one, the events in season one compared to where we are now are quite insignificant, you know? <laughs> They're nowhere near as big events as we see now. So why do we keep mentioning Jackie Laverty? So yes, she was linked to organised crime. We know that. She is involved in some way, but she wasn't that high up. 
you know, she she was no wasn't high up enough to be safe. You know, she was killed by them. She was just somebody who bought them properties, right? And just embezzled money for them. She wasn't high up, apparently. Like, it just seems that she was just being used by them. And she was very bad at her job because she killed somebody. You know, I feel like she was just used because she had this relationship with Gates, a high-ranking police officer. Yeah, so I feel like there's something that both we and the characters, you know, AC-12, have missed with the Jackie Laverty case. Obviously, they haven't found her body, so maybe they just keep mentioning her to keep reminding us that their bo- her body hasn't been found, so maybe they'll find her body and find something other than Gates's DNA on her. And the last theory I found that seems to be quite popular is that Dot is actually alive. There's always the idea that a character that has been killed off is actually alive. However, with Dot, we did see him die on screen, right? Unless we just didn't see him pronounced dead. Maybe there were people in the ambulance that were corrupt and like pronounced him dead when he wasn't actually dead and took him away and then took him to safety. I don't know. I feel... I don't like it. I think it's kind of lazy story writing when a major character that dies that is a very significant death, you know, Dot's death is very significant, why would he still be alive? I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and comment down below. Anything you want to comment down below. Did you? Any of these theories that you really agree with or any that you disagree with? What do you think is going to happen? And if you want to see more videos, to do with kind of theories within TV shows or just TV shows themselves, then subscribe because I have loads of videos like that already and those are videos that I have planned. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Also, I wasn't going to show this but it, it arrived when I was filming but my sister did me a painting. How amazing is that? I think she's going to start selling her paintings. She sells like her digital drawings already. I'll link her Depop below. She also did my channel banner which is there.